We are live. All right. Here we are. Back from the uh the honeymoon. Got the got the wedding ring on here. So big shout outs to uh to to my wife Ashley. Uh, make sure that you are sharing this on your social media pages all across the board. I'm getting ready to do the same. So just give me a second. You know, again, we still got about a minute left until kickoff. But it's exciting to uh, get back into this. We miss you guys. You know, we've been talking about possibly doing a once a month online trivia for all of our fans all across the U.S. And I think we're going to start doing that probably in late April. So very excited to, to bring that back. You know, for those of you here local to Greensboro, we got greens. Uh, we have trivia nights every single night of the week. You know, Monday night, you got Jerry at the Bearded Goat. Tuesday night, you got Matthew over at Brass Taps, as well as Jerry over at Odin Brewing. Wednesday nights, I believe we have Doggos as well as Stumble Stillskins. Thursday night, we have Bearded Goat over at Revolution Mill. And then Friday night, we also have uh, Stumble Stillskins again. So be sure to check out our event page for all that fun stuff. And we want to we know we want to know your questions. We want to hear them. We want your comments. This episode, it, like as I, as I mentioned, is going to be our first live stream that we are going to air on the podcast as well this week. And it's going to be all things The Last of Us. So as we get set up, it is about that time. So just give us about another minute and we will be ready to roll. Jordan, why don't you tell them how awesome it is to be a college graduate? No. <laughs> it's great. It's like just months of the past three months I've just slept and wondered why I did it. And hopefully it will all come into fruition. <laughs> and it will. Hoping it will. It will. For all, for all you Hollywood types out there, she's on the market. She's been chilling, enjoying herself, and uh, I've been enjoying her being here so it has been nothing but great so let me share this a couple more times and we are going to get right back to it so again ladies and gents welcome back to zero dark nerdy our first live stream since the pandemic on facebook live and we are excited to be back this is your boy brian aka el nino and today i am joined with jordan no aka infamously no aka that's right there we go that's how it happens here that's just that's just what she does so that's why i love her for it aka no aka aka no aka jordan hernandez big shout outs to our crew out there matthew jadon ryan uh jordan nicole tim the whole entire zero dark nerdy true uh nerdy crew of course elizabeth Dennis, everybody out there, thank you guys so much. Uh, a lot of you may not know this. We are getting ready to approach season six, year five of this incredibly crazy journey that has been Zero Dark Nerdy. And uh, I tell you, I'm so glad to be a part of this with, with all of you, especially having my daughter on this episode, which this episode means a lot to us. You know, Ellie and Joel even though they are not father and daughter, it is very much a father daughter story. Whether if you're playing the video game, watching the TV show, you see the, I don't want to say triumphs cause there's not a lot of triumphs, a lot of tribulations, but you know, you, you see them bond throughout the video game and most importantly throughout the show as well. And you know, a couple things that we want to state out there first and foremost, you know, big thank you to all of you, our fans, our family, everybody just across across the world that supported us for, for the last five years. It's just been an incredible journey. And uh, it's, it's why I do what I do. You know, I have, a, I, have a, I have a nine to five and this is my five to nine. And this is um, everything to me and something that I can hopefully pass down to my daughter one day who is just crushing it and will be crushing it out in Hollywood one day. But as she chills and digresses, <laughs> she's humble. You know how humble she is. Uh, we do want to give a big shout out to a lot of our sponsors and friends out there. You know, first and foremost, the Believe Podcast Network. 
uh, for, you know, having us on, on their amazing podcast platform. Uh, BetOnline.ag for all your sports betting needs. Of course, Rabbit Comics. Big shout out to uh, Brandon and Melissa out there from Rabbit Comics. So make sure you check them out at RabbitComics.com for exclusive variants as well as slabs. And Terminal Tap, Josh and Catherine, we just got done hanging out with them just a little bit ago. Be sure to check out Terminal Tap, especially this Saturday for you wrestling fans out there. We cannot say the words because we don't want to get sued, but they will be talking about and having a party to do with a particular wrestling event that is going on this weekend. So if you are in the Greensboro area, please be sure to check out Terminal Tap. Um, be sure to say hi to Josh and Catherine. Phenomenal spot, great beers, great wines. Uh, they do music bingo on Mondays, trivia on Thursdays, and just a great friendly neighborhood bar. And then, uh, you know, on top of that, too, we made some friends along the way during our podcast journey. You see me rocking this right now. You see me rocking this a lot of, epi- a lot of episodes. Municipal, be sure to check them out. Mark Wahlberg's brand, amazing, amazing sport utility gear literally the best on the planet no no joke so again be sure to check them out municipal.com and we have a 30 percent off code for you to use for all of their shirts hats apparel the whole nine yards the most comfortable sport utility gear on the planet the code is zdn30 so zero dark neither zero dark nerdy 30 zdn30 to get your 30% off discount with municipal.com. Big shout out, big shout outs out there to Rihanna. So Jordan, what are we going to be talking about today? I know I already hinted it a little bit, but you know, what's going to be the big thing? Like what have you and I been bonding about for the last few years now? I mean, the last of us, right? (laughs) Um, yeah, we're going to talk about the game. Um, I'm mostly the show, of course. More people have seen the show. Um, and that's why it's gotten so much hype recently. And so we're going to talk about the game and the show and how it relates, how it uh, kind of goes in different directions and all our favorite moments and stuff like that. So, Okay. Well, why don't we just go ahead and start us off while I pull up our live stream and see what questions will be coming in. While, while you're watching us, again, we're excited to be back. This is our first live stream since the pandemic, and that's when we were doing trivia. I believe at the time we were doing it once a week, and then we went down to once a month. So first live stream. So feel free to, to chime in with questions, comments, whatever you would like in, in terms of all things The Last of Us. I think we'll just kind of go ahead and start with uh, just our overall summary of how we feel about the first season of The Last of Us, and I'm going to shift that over to you. Um, I feel great about it. I think it's definitely the best video game adaptation I've seen, and I think that's a lot to do with, you know, the creators of the game, um, or Neil Druckmann being directly involved with the adaptation of the show. Um, it's great. It's pretty accurate. I mean, it is accurate, the... It's just like any adaptation of any like book or um, video game or whatever, it can't get everything that the game has. Obviously, it can't have all of our favorite scenes and like fight scenes and stuff like that, but that's because it's an adaptation. Like we have mm. to move the story along. <laughs> right, um, right. So I really liked it, and it's really nice to hear that people who also didn't play the game really love it. Um, I think that they should be really proud of that. Um, yeah, I'm I'm very happy with them. I'm happy with the casting. Um, I'm happy with the choices that they made creatively. And um, yeah, I think I think in a lot of ways, it's to me, it's really perfect. So now I, I do want to know from you because you're not a Game of Thrones fan. I'm, you know, I've don't, just never don't, seen don't it. judge her for I've it. Never, I've just She's never, never watched, watched it. it. Don't judge her for it. So you were not really familiar with Bella Ramsey, but what, what did you think about her take on Ellie and how she did on this show? Um, I loved it. Um, yeah, I never heard of or seen Bella Ramsey before the show, but I mean, to me, she's a great Ellie. I mean, she embodies Ellie kind of to a T the attitude and everything, the character, um, 
I think it's so ridiculous. I just have to like the people that immediately started to hate on her as soon as they said she was cast um, is insane to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, because a lot of people hate her and it's not because she's not a good performer. It's because of how she looks. And I'm right. like, you, you're people who didn't play the games, but watch the show are not fake fans. The fake right. fans are people who hate the show because of the cast members and how they look or their sexual orientation, whatever. You're a fake fan, <laughs> like, because yeah. she does the story complete justice. Yeah, It's about the story, not like all this irrelevant stuff. But I think she's great. She, I mean, I'm sure she's going to win Emmys for this role. Um, yeah, because yeah. I mean, for, for uh, those of us Game of Thrones fans, you know, she, she was a, like a crowd favorite especially the last couple seasons that we got her in. She, it's not that she was, you know, a character that was in every episode. She was in very limited episodes, but the episodes that she was in, she was powerful. And I think HBO saw that. HBO does a really good job of retaining a lot of talent, especially when it comes to, you know, quote unquote side characters. You see a lot of the same actors in a lot of HBO shows and I think it's because they really do appreciate the talent that they have around them, whether if Hollywood appreciates it or not, that they bring them back for more shows and more series. I mean, you can go all the way back to Sopranos, to, um, you know, Entourage, to everything else. You see a lot of these recurring actors, and I don't know if it's just something maybe contract-wise that HBO has where they're just smart. And, you know, we have this, this terminology where good help's hard to find. Where HBO, to me, I think does a solid job of appreciating talent when they see it and just being like, hey, listen, we may not have something for you yet, but we may have something mm -hmm. for you here down the road. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's, uh, I agree with you 100% on that. It's not so much, you know, with video games, yeah, you, you actually get the visual side of the person, especially when you're talking about a newer video game, right? We're not trying to compare this to a 8-bit Nintendo video game where it's just blocks. But at the end of the day, though, a great actor and actress or actor or person, whatever it may be, that's what they are. Whether they look exactly like this person or not, or just how you imagine them to be. And I thought they were great because to be honest with you, in my opinion, as much as I love Pedro Pascal, and I do love him to death, he would not have been my first choice, choice for Joel. You know, I was looking more towards the, uh, I can't think of his name right now, the actor that played Jamie Lannister on Game of Thrones. A much older version um you know so that was my first choice but I, I obviously after seeing this he was an excellent choice for the role mm -hmm. and then neil Druckmann, who created the game who is now the president of naughty dog studios who created the game as well as he worked on uh, uncharted and, and a few other uh video game articles as well you know, he, his whole thing was, and Jordan and I were talking about this before the show, and you can see it when they do the, there's actually a 30-minute episode of The Last of Us. It's all behind the scenes. And it was the voice actors. The making of The Last the, of the Us. The making of The Last of Us. Called. Exactly. The voice actors, in particular, the actor who played Joel, who's also in the show briefly, he talked about, well, I don't, I don't know why we should do this. Like, you know, it's already a beautiful game. It's already a beautiful story in the game. Why should we do this? And Neil Druckmann was 100% right. He said there's people out there that will never, ever pick up a PlayStation or just a video game remote control, and this story needs to be told. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what they did. You know, I mean, go like kind of piggybacking off of what you said. You know, my thing is, was there a lot of action in this in this first season? No, there wasn't. When there was, it was awesome. In particular, episode five, we'll get into that in a little bit. But they really wanted to fill in the gaps on a lot of the storyline that the video game didn't have. Because let's face it, if we're playing a video game to where it's 90% story and 10% action, the majority of us would, for the most part, get bored. Whereas we're watching the show, we've done the action parts already, or at least are getting ready to. We're going to get into that in a little bit, too, as far as how far I am in the first video game and how far Jordan is in the first two video games to where they really wanted to sign like significant. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Exemplify. Or, Exemplify. Um, yes. Know. We all know what you're Signify. saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. just a, a lot of things that were missed, in particular, 
you know, the one, which is unfortunate, the one I want, I'm, I'm doing this with heavy quotation marks because they got the, the most 1% votes on IMDb history, the bill episode on episode three. But you know, to me, that's just a bunch of people that are homophobes that were just not happy with a great story that were just looking for blood and, you know, guts the entire time. Yeah, those are the fake fans I'm talking about. Exactly. Sorry, not sorry. But. Exactly. Yeah, definitely sorry, not sorry. And at the end of the day, you know, if that's what you're all about, then you don't have to listen to our podcast. We're not making you <clears> listen <throat> to it. So, you know, go on and listen to your other <laughs> shit. <laughs> um, yeah, but, yeah, I think, yeah, the show does a, the video game itself does a really good job of, it's such a human story, like a, it does a great job at storytelling. And so the show, I think for me personally, did an even better job at making the relationship between Joel and Ellie more tangible, like believable, like right. the father daughter dynamic. Cause when I played the game, I believed it, but it just didn't really like, I don't know. It just didn't like get me as much as to where, when I watched the show and I see how they've built up Joel and Ellie's relationship and, um, I don't know. I just think I felt it like I felt it more when Joel made the decision he did to save Ellie. Like I felt like when I watched the show, I, I had a better understanding of why he did that just because right. they built the relationship so well. Right. Um, and I, I just, I was like, because that's the core of the show is like a, a debate about like, or I guess, you know, saving your loved one, saving the people you love mm -hmm. versus potentially saving the world. Yep. Um, and like there's, they're equally the, at the end of the day, they're equally important sides, whichever side you're on, or if, yeah, I mean, you're in the middle. I mean, I'm in the middle because I understand, I feel like I understand both sides. Um, I don't know. The show does a really good job at making you think about the repercussions of both sides of if you choose to save your daughter or if you choose to save the world because there's questions with both like okay if you choose to save if if joel chose to uh sacrifice ellie for the cure okay but who gets the cure how much time is it going to take what about all the other infected that are still out in the world right it, like it, will it even will sacrificing ellie actually provide a cure at all even yep. though they really really think it would Yep. There's still not like 100% certainty. And, and, you know, I'm really glad that you mentioned that because that's 100% true. Because say the quarantine zone found the cure first. Does that yeah. automatically mean that everybody gets a cure? You know, or is it going to be just kind of how things are in our current government to where, hey, if you have money, you're going to get, you know, support for all this yeah. stuff to where if you're broke, you don't get this. And then same thing with the fireflies, too. It's like, okay, well, maybe our, our, only our people get the cure and right. everybody the else fireflies uh support a certain cause so they're not i just don't i don't find it very believable that they would be super willing to distribute the um no why would the fireflies the get that and then to... go out and save the people that work in the qz yeah. that they've been blowing up and, and and firing guns at for years on end yeah it's like it's just a big moral debate that's what the whole show's about that's what the first game's about that's what the second game's about it's still about the same thing like what do you do yeah i don't know it's like when you're in an, apoco an apocalypse everybody on the planet is going through day-to-day -day trauma yeah because they're in an apocalypse but then you add the like personal trauma that would exist outside of apocalypse apocalypse such as losing a loved one mm -hmm. or this and that it's like you can't you can't possibly be like, oh, I would have never, I would have never not sacrificed Ellie, or I, or I would have this or that. Like you just, right? It's unfathom, it's unfathomable. <laughs> like, right? The the amount of trauma these people, these characters, like, yeah. are enduring is. Yeah. Uh, it's and, just, and I'm not trying to get too deep here, but it's just like, if there was an actual cure for cancer, would that actually be out there, or you know, would it be saved just for? The rich and famous and and you know and then just things like that like just getting a little bit off topic it's not like oh the fireflies we found the cure we found the person we're gonna let everybody know about this yeah and you know that's the question at the end of the day and with with all these shows you know, even though this is this is not more or less a a walking dead show by any means 
But the true meaning of these shows, it's not the zombies, it's not the clickers, it's not the infected, it's how we as a society would act during these situations, which to be honest with you, watching these shows would not be far off. We would click up, we would, you know, try to do our best to survive on our own, especially when there is no government, there's no police, there's no nothing else. You just have you and your loved ones to, you know, depend on and survive on. That's my only, you know, reason to keep going. And we see that with Joel, you know, again, we mentioned this in the beginning of the podcast, obviously spoilers ahead. So if you've not watched or played the last of us, you know, please catch us on another episode. We'll air this on the podcast and, and go from there. You know, the beginning of the show, the beginning of the game, Joel loses his daughter. So, you know, he really, his thing is as he's gone on in this post-apocalyptic world, he's like, yeah, I'm living, but I really don't have any reason to live. And he ends up finding reluctantly in, in, I think you're hundred percent right. It shows more in the, in the show than it does the game. Yeah. He ends up finding a reason to live through someone else that he does consider a daughter mm-hmm. trying and he, whether she had the cure or not. And, you know, we see by the end of the season and you're hundred percent right. She, he doesn't know what they're going to do with it. He wants to save her because she would have had to die to sacrifice herself for all of us to live. If that was the original plan to begin with in the first place. Yeah. You just have to think if you've lost everything in an apocalypse, you have to hold on to like whatever little you have. So Joel's already lost his daughter and he doesn't, I think losing Ellie would just, I mean, it would have crushed him. Yeah. Well, the show, an addition, the show made that was not in the game, at least directly or anything I could perceive in the game was um, the part where uh, he kind of has a real conversation with Ellie for like the first time and is pretty vulnerable. And he's like, he basically tells her that like, if, you didn't come around like I would have like I or no he says um oh or he, he got tried the scar, to kill himself where he got the scar yeah which I did not know that was not that's not in the game is that he and I was going to ask you if that was in the game no I at least I don't think so unless it was yeah, yeah I don't think so but when his daughter died he tried to kill himself because he was like I don't there's nothing else to live for and so mm-hmm. and then he basically tells Ellie like you've You've given, given me, me like live. a purpose, like something to like keep going for. So, yeah. which led to a beautiful scene, which when we watched the behind the scenes of The Last of Us, where she got to meet the giraffe, and yeah. she actually got to meet the giraffe in real life. Yeah, and this is of course after the the cannibals and all that, and you know he calls her baby girl for the first time. You know you see this just progression of two people that are like fuck it, we're stuck together. Like, we just have to make it to, hey, I I don't want to live without you, and I don't want you to live without me. And that's the progression of the show, which I think Neil Druckmann, and I cannot remember his other name, but he was the one that did um, Chernobyl, uh, just did a fantastic job of showing. Like, you know, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, as far as my summer, yes, there's not a ton of action. You're not getting a lot of the infected. You're not getting a lot of what the first game has to offer. And I get the frustration out there for fans because of that. But at the same time, this is something completely different, though. It's showing you more the story of how people can survive through this. This isn't an, this isn't an action story. This isn't Die Hard, The Last of Us. You know what I mean? It's It's showing us how people can have hope and, you know, not just Joel and Ellie, but we're, you know, we're talking, we're, we're going to get to some other characters here in a little bit, but have, have hope for something else. And then you see how they can open up and be more than what they are. Cause I mean, they go through some devastating things. I mean, the, the epilogue, um, not epilogue, uh, just the monologue, I'm sorry, with, with Ellie where, Joel tells her, listen, you're better off with my brother. And she's just like, fuck you. Like everybody else in my life has either died or left me. And now you're leaving me. Like I felt that scene, felt it. And I mean, there's a lot of scenes in this show, which is why it's so well directed. It's so well written. It's just so well shot. It's just a beautiful, beautiful show where if you can just, you know, take out, especially for our hardcore gamers out there, 
Like take out the video game for a couple seconds and just try to focus on just more of the story that the video game wasn't able to tell us. You will appreciate it. And I mean, I'm one of those people to where I'm like, I hate reading a book before watching a movie. I hate it. I, I really, really hate it because, you know, nine times out of 10, it does not live up to it. That's why I just, if I hear about a movie, I'll watch the movie first and then I'll read the book after. I know it's reverse, but I'm telling you what, it's made my mental state so much better because I'm not going into it like, I wanted to see this, I wanted to do this. And this is why, you know, getting to our next part here, I was telling Jordan, when I first started, I was like, I really wanted to finish the first game before the, before the show started. And I'm really glad I didn't. So just to kind of give you guys some comparison out there, I got to Bill's Town, which is awesome. Don't you get mean, me wrong. Wait, Bill or Tommy? Bill's Town with all the booby traps and everything okay, else. Okay. Yeah. So, and that was my only gripe with the Bill's Town episode or Bill's episode. It was a beautiful episode. Just the way it was shot, the way it was filmed, the way it was edited. I mean, everything. I just wanted to see a lot more of some of the action in there you know and it, to me it should have been like a two-parter if, if anything you know where there was i felt like there was other other episodes that seemed like there were two parts like st louis which we'll get to that in a little bit that was two parts i would have much rather seen like the first part be bill more like bill's town in the video game and then the second part we actually get the backstory about bill and frank I think Leia. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I think our dog just <laughs> fell down the steps. Do you want to go check? Yeah, give me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> All right. Um, Jordan, take over for one second and I'll be right back. Okay. Um, yeah, just talk about Bill's sound for a minute. Bill. Um, well, let's see. Obviously, that episode was amazing um yeah I truly if if episodes if single episodes could win an award um just on their own it would be that episode for me like that would <laughs> whatever it was it was great um i don't know where else to go with bill and frank because he had more to talk about it but i did but um i'll just start with my favorite episode was, I think it's the fifth one with Henry and Sam. Um, that episode, because it gave you everything, everything that you could want from the show if you were also uh, playing the game. It, it had the most action, at least I think it did. The most action, is she okay? Okay. Um, yeah, it had the most action. It shows you the bloater for the first time, which is not when the bloater, you first see a bloater in the game, but I didn't care because it was so awesome. Um, it gave me full body chills to see it coming out of the ground with the horde. I loved that. So it gave me the action that I was really wanting to see from the game. Um, and the sniper scene as well, which is happening at the same time. Um, and then that was also the Henry and Sam episode, and that was a really nice, or I mean, not nice, but it was a really beautiful part side story in The Last of Us. Um, so it also gave the the amazing human tangible aspect of, that The Last of Us has that not a lot of um, other video games do. Um, like Henry and Sam's, they're part of the story, and the show just made it so they just really rip your heart out of your chest, which it does in the game, but the show just, I mean, it just, they did what they needed to do. And I really, I, I had no choice but to love it for that. Like it, they did a wonderful job storytelling. Um, so yeah, Henry, that's what I'm talking about. Henry okay. and Sam episode. Yeah. So, so for me, as I mentioned, I, the farthest I got was Bill's town where he just discovered that Frank died and then that was it. You know, then you have to get the car started and, and do all this stuff. So, you know, I think at this point now we can start comparing a little bit more of the game to the show where, you know, Ellie's driving the car, but they still got to get it to push and, and you're doing all this and they run into Frank and you can just tell like Frank was an important part of Bill's life. But at the same time, 
they're just being bombarded by, you know, infected and just have to keep moving. So you don't know much, which is why I really did enjoy the third episode, even though, yes, I would have loved to have seen it maybe broken up into two parts or just something similar to where you could have seen more of Bill's survivalist tactics, uh, a lot of the booby traps. I mean, to me, one of the greatest parts of the video game in part one is where you're hanging upside down and you're trying to protect Ellie and you're shooting at zombies upside down, which is not an easy thing to do, period. Whether if it's zombies, targets, no no matter what it is. (laughs) Um, So back to episode five with, with, uh, with Sam and Henry, so, I, I, like I said, I was not there yet. So, I had no idea that Sam was not deaf in the video game. And I have not made it this far. And then Sam played by, uh, looks like Keenan Montreal Woodward. And then Henry played by Lamar Johnson or being hunted by a character that's not in the game. Um, it's Melanie Linsky, who you may know her from, I believe she's in... Um, Fireflies. She's in a lot of stuff. Or not I Fireflies. Just... What's uh, Yellow Jackets? Yeah. yeah Yellow yeah, yeah. Jackets. She's in a lot of stuff. Great actress. She plays Kathleen, who's pretty much the leader of like uh, this group that took over the the QZ for St. Louis. But there's people that were, for lack of a better term, like narcs, that were, you know, giving information to the QZ of people that were trying to take over and this and the other, which is why Henry and Sam were hunted. So. I did not know this. In- well, Henry and S- S- I, I believe Henry and Sam in the show are really being hunted, not only for that, but for. I'm pretty sure I'm right at least that Sam, the the youngest brother, had cancer, and um, Henry uh, needed to get a needed to get a, a medicine or something like that, and had to kill right. her brother in order to do it. I think and you're right. that's she's going insane because I mean, she's on this whole revenge plot because they killed her brother um, and they had a, a very close, important relationship. So. Yeah. But the main difference is between the game. Sam is deaf in the show where he is not in the game. And I just thought, honestly, that was a great, great touch, to be honest with you, because Sam being played by, again, uh, Keenan Montreal Woodward is actually deaf in real life and you could see a lot of the behind the scenes stuff which if you have not watched the show there's usually a five minute i don't want to see episode but you know clips of like how that episode was made or whatnot and i just thought it was just so well done because i actually preferred that better to i I prefer that better in their relationship in the show than i did to the game yeah i mean it it just did a lot it such basic representation that's that's why representation matters i mean speaking on like um any kind of community um like it 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 really does i mean give voice to the deaf deaf community um it but aside from that it just it makes it also like puts a lot of depth into the story and puts a lot of power in words that aren't necessarily spoken um the the boy who plays Sam is a great actor and mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean the little um like a race board he had added a oh, lot to the story in itself, God. obviously. And yeah, it, it was it was a great addition to the show. Um just by itself. I, that's just one of the many things that this show and that Neil Druckerman uh, Druckman does to try to explain to viewers that this is like a very this isn't your typical zombie apocalypse movie or show or show or movie it's 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 like my dad said it's a it's a human story so it's telling you like how people react and would act when you're actually living with Mm -hmm. like when you're trying to keep your loved ones safe and your friends and family um it wouldn't just all be guns blazing the whole time and um Unless it's for them. Well, it might be <laughs> like, in South Carolina, but who knows? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love you, SC. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, these shows, if it's just about just shooting down the infected zombies, whatever it may be, it just gets old at the end of the day. It does. We, we've done this. We've, we've been there. 
we've seen it all. Yeah. And I, I just think this show is about so much more than that, and it has been. And then you have incredible characters in there. And then just the way they put in those those little, not so much twists, you know what I mean? But I love the fact that this was played by a deaf actor, and he was, and he, you know, he is deaf. And it just made it just, uh, you know, I think even if I would have gotten that far in the video game, which I hadn't, I think I still would have appreciated it more. Mm-hmm. Like, did you appreciate it more that he was deaf after you already knew what was going to happen and everything? Um, I think I appreciated it equally. It was just, I don't, I've said it a billion times. The, the show was just wonderful at like getting you attached to characters and the relationships that they have and like what they fought to keep mm-hmm. the lengths that they've gone to save the very little that they have left. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, um, it, obviously it did. It was more touching because uh, what what the actor was able to do without without verbal words, yeah. of course, yeah. with words but without verbal words. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was great. That's definitely one of the reasons why I like. That's my favorite episode. Um, gotcha. Is Henry and Sam and. The way they built up Sam and Ellie's relationship was really cute and yeah. made it even more hard. Especially more on the comic book side, too. Yeah, they they made it even more hard to see yeah. that happen. And, yeah. yeah. I feel was, like, because my daughter was here, so when I was watching that episode, I had no idea what was going to happen next. So she's like one of those people that have watched Game of Thrones, and it's the Red Wedding episode, and they've read the book. And they're just looking over at you yeah. like, oh, I think this is going to end well. And they just look over at you just like the new GIF with uh, Nicolas Cage yeah, and like, Pedro. It's like, yeah, it's going to end well. If you think it's going to end well in The Last of Us, <laughs> I don't have a lot of good yeah. news for you. Yeah, the, the modern day Game of Thrones um, is what we're getting right here with two phenomenal Game of Thrones actors and actresses and, and actress people. So, um so, so I take it that you named that as your favorite episode, right? Mm-hmm. While I was down there. By the way, Leia's fine. Our yeah. dog is good. We were in for a little scare. Is she on the couch? Yeah, yeah, she's on the couch now. So, yeah, she's good. She's good. So, <laughs> it's happened before. Big, up, big ups to Leia. Yeah, that just sounded like a like a piano going down something the maybe fell. Steps. I thought something maybe <laughs> fell on Ashley. No, that <laughs> like would have cabinet. actually made more sense, to be honest with you. But uh, <laughs> God bless her. Um, all right, so my next two favorite episodes, I know you touched on episode five. I said what I had to say just real quick. You know, I think obviously when the truck sank in that episode, it was like, okay, we're, we're in for some stuff because I mean, let's face it. Yes. There's not a ton of action this season. We've ran into two clickers in the museum. There's going to be a lot of action next season, it seems, so calm down. On top of that, so they've already guaranteed there's going to be more of the zombie or the infected hive mentality, which we did not talk about this real quick. So in the summary that I have, I think it's important to, like, educate people on this in case you did not watch the show or, you know, did not maybe notice this. The intro to the show is incredibly important because – this is actually like a real thing. I'm not saying that this is going to happen to people. Hopefully not. But, you know, ants and spiders have been taken over by fungi. Cordyceps. Yeah. Quadriceps, however you say it. Cordyceps. Cordyceps. Quadriceps. Cordyceps. Prime. For, yeah, <laughs> for many, many a millennia now. And the only reason it's not converted over to that happening to humans is because we have our body temperature is too high. And I think the very first scene of the first episode where they're having that interview in that 70s format and the one guy's talking about, you know, airborne contaminants Mm -hmm. and this, that, any other, like the other stuff that we normally see in every other, you know, zombie movie, right? It's going to be airborne or, or just bites and this, that, any other. It's the other guy that's like, actually, you know, how do you say it? It's, Global warming? No, no, no. Or what? Cordyceps. Cordyceps. There it is. Yeah. I did not want to say quadriceps again. Cordyceps. Cordyceps that are the most fearful thing because they can inhabit an insect's brain, and they have, and then the insects go into their hive or swarm, whatever it may be, 
and take over the entire thing. And the only reason they haven't done that to humans is because it hasn't been warm enough. And here we are 40 years later, global warming. And even if you watch the making of The Last of Us, they say this could possibly maybe happen one day. Hopefully not. It's not we don't want it it's to. It's not going to happen. I mean, it's not going to happen. But, it, but scientifically, like, this is this a pretty This is how it would happen. How it would happen. And, you know, it, this is the most... Using the fungus and the cordyceps is, is how we humanize zombies happening. Correct. Because, I mean, when we're dead and buried, we're overtaken by fungus. Like, it's just... Uh, we are connected to the earth. Mm-hmm. So, yeah... It definitely makes that's another human aspect of this show is the the science behind it because <laughs> yep. they research and um, yep. I mean in the show they show they kind of give hints at that like it got into like flour and like making food mm-hmm. and that's also part of when the outbreak started because um, I mean the very first I, episode he they dodge pancakes. a bullet yeah she the daughter wanted to make pancakes for Joel's birthday yep. or something and. He's like, I forgot. Uh, I forgot the cake and this and that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and you see the neighbor getting fed biscuits. Yeah, she's making cookies and she mm-hmm. offers Sarah, Joel's daughter, one. And she's like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And then you go back later and she's seen the first one that Sarah sees infected. Um, the, the old lady, <laughs> like the, wheel, the wheelchair. Um, and so it spread through flour and food and industrial like kind of pipelines. So. Yeah. If this ever were to happen, this is how. But, I, I mean, I don't want people to worry. It's not going to happen. I don't think it'll happen. Everybody's going keto. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Starting tomorrow, everyone listening to this episode is going straight protein all the time. No flour. So, um, you know, besides episode five, which, again, with the swarm, with the bloater, so you get your first boss out of it, it was just such a, a well-done episode, uh, uh, up and down. I mean – I was talking to Jordan about this earlier, and I was like, do we even have, like, any, like, least favorite episodes? And she's like, no, we don't. We just have favorites more than others. So my other two favorite episodes, to be honest with you, are episode 9 and episode 10. You know, episode 9 is where she's trying to help Joel out. Again, we already mentioned this. Spoilers ahead. Uh, You know, try to find some food, some medicine, anything. She runs into... Tell me the, the name of, so that's the thing that, you know, again, she's this, she's already beaten the first game. So she's in the second game. So she can fill me in more on about this group that she ran into in the show. Um, I don't think this group is really involved in the second game, but whatever the, you know, the cannibal uh, mm-hmm. predatory guy. Yeah. Um, the weird the, fucking Basically cult checks leader. all the boxes of creepy, scary guy. <laughs> Manson, um, Manson, Manson, Manson. I mean, woman beater, all of it. He's the worst. Um, runs into him and his his crew, his cult that he's kind of created, but they're all seemingly he's the only him and his like friends are the only one on board. Everyone else looks very scared the whole time. Petrified. Um, they're just there because they have shelter. Yeah. Um, but and yeah, eating each other without knowing it. But yeah, you can yeah. go on. But so you know, and to that aspect of it. You really see towards the end of the episode without giving away too much. Ellie's like, not that she was a nice girl to begin with. You know, Ellie's always been like, hey, listen, I'm going to do what I can. I don't really know who my mom is. I don't know the backstory. I'm just, I'm just trying to make it through. I'm immune to all this shit. But you can really see her kind of becoming, I don't want to say an animal, but just like, hey, you know, with or without Joel, I need to do what I can to make it. I think before that scene, it was like, I'm not going to be able to do shit without Joel. Mm -hmm. I think after that scene, she's like, you know what? God forbid Joel's not around. I can still make it by myself and I can fuck somebody up. Yeah, that's definitely a pivotal point for her character development is hacking that guy to death and coming out of it alive. Because, I mean, I think in the at the end of that episode where they do, like, the recap with the creators and stuff, they talk mm-hmm. about, like, it's her first time kind of without Joel, like, yeah. in total fear, like, feeling, feeling like, ultimately powerless. Like, yeah. um, so her coming out of that is definitely pivotal. And um, 
I mean, you see it, it affects her for the rest of the episode. She gets quiet. Joel right. starts talking a lot instead, like right. trying to fill yeah, in her you gaps. Yeah, definitely see the yin yang um, in there. Yeah, it it kind of shows her the cruelty that exists, not just with the p- people that she and Joel have been fighting, just like all over. Like it's, mm-hmm. um, I mean, and I, mean it's I, think, giving... I think it's the first point she realizes, like, you know, Joel may not be around for a long time. Like, I need to figure out how I'm going to survive on my own because, you know, the episode before is where Joel gets hurt and she's like, how am I going to do this without you? How am, how am I going to make it? Mm-hmm. And I think this is the first time where she's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a killer dude, but at the same time, like, mm-hmm. I need to figure out how to keep doing this just in case Joel's not around anymore. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, besides that, the uh, top three episode, and I mean, it's not just because she and my daughter. We both have just excellent tastes in, in movies and, for the most part, music. <laughs> but, uh, you know, episode 10, it was just great to, uh, you know, see them kind of come full circle. Like, hey, I need you. You need me. I want to be with you. Uh, you're not, you know, the whole time with Joel, he was like, you're a package. You're a priority. This is why I'm transporting you. You're my final wish for Tess. Yeah. Correct. Like I'm doing this as a favor to Tess to where you see that conversion of you are practically my daughter, but not my daughter. And you see that in the same way with Allie. But then on top of that too, you see this super Terminator side to Joel when he finds out what is going on when they get to the facility and how he just straight up like yeah. mercs everyone to get back to Ellie, which I think, and I mentioned this to my daughter before, and I've had this conversation with men, with many a dad. It's like, that's, that's a mentality. It's, you know what? We, we even if you were the cure to the end of the world, we don't know what you're going to do with that. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to allow you to do that to anyone that I love. And I think it's just that adrenaline, that power rush to where it's, I'm going to do everything I can or die trying to, I didn't agree to this. We're, we're going to get them out. And it's just a powerful, very, again, very well shot scene. I mean, big shout outs to, Druckman and the entire team like HBO just knows how to get it done and I mean this show is it's up there with I mean you know Game of Thrones Sopranos I mean every everything else in the HBO catalog like they leave no stone left unturned when it comes to just the visuals the the story the editing everything else I mean it's just absolutely gorgeous the way that this entire series was shot and there's a lot of shows out there to where a lot of people, you know, it takes them a season or two. You know, Breaking Bad, I wasn't into Breaking Bad till about halfway through season two. You know, I can tell you right now, just getting into The Last of Us video game, I was hooked from the first episode, not even knowing what was going to happen next. And it's very rare for a show to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other person in charge, I can't think of his name right now, but the one... Can't either um that was helping him out that did chernobyl you know four episode arc that was heartbreaking but also phenomenal at the same time so you know kudos to the team out there from naughty dog and and hbo max and hbo for for doing what they did because i mean it's it's a beautiful show i mean it's it's well written it's well acted it's it's well everything i mean i can't sit there and point out like oh my gosh they messed this part up or this person has a fat suit on like it's just great. And if you enjoy great television, watch it. If you've beaten the game and you have some gripes, I get it. It happens. All right. It happens to people that read a book and they watch a movie and they're like, yeah, well, it's not the same as a book. This wasn't intended to be the same as The Last of Us Part One video game. Was no, there was no intention in doing that. That's why they did this. So give yourself, do yourself a favor and just give it a rewatch without thinking about the video game. I had to do the same thing when I watched Ready Player One after reading the book. Absolutely loved the book. Hated the movie the first time around. And then after I saw it the second time without just, you know, going into it, like, hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not going to think about the book at all going into this movie. A hundred times more appreciated the movie. And I think that's where a lot of people just need to just chill out, relax, 
This isn't supposed to be frame by frame the video game because why do that? It's why, impossible. Why do that? It's impossible to. But do why anyways. would you want to do that anyways? You have the video game to play if you want. I mean, to do the that. creators, I'm sure, expected backlash for this of and course. that because it's such a popular game and it's such a popular show. It was immediately such a popular show. You're gonna get hyper criticism always i mean d doing a hbo show based off a super popular game yeah i mean it's gonna happen but really the, it's really not that different it, yeah. it the the differences people are focusing on are so irrelevant oh it's, it's so minuscule like it, it it's like oh this person's not black in the game oh this person's yeah. not what this isn't it's like who none of these are really like intricate to the story um it's like representational um elements that really just i mean add depth if anything um but yeah all right so last but not least what are your predictions or just kind of like wish list for for season two of this show and then um last but definitely not least who do you think is going to play abby abby um if if we get to her in season two we, we we will okay it's i'm pretty sure it's confirmed season two is gonna not gonna cover the entire last of us two game last of us two is twice as long mm -hmm. the story is even more insane um i mean it's a hundred to me it's way harder than the first one like mm -hmm. there's a lot going I'm watching, on i'm watching her play it trust me it looks hard as hell <laughs> um but also nobody in the comments say anything about abby or who she is because my dad has no idea and please don't ruin it. <laughs> please don't ruin it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. Um, I'm not that far yet. So I don't want those spoilers yet. I'm just asking her who she who she thinks should play Abby. I'm just gonna hop on the bandwagon. At least the, what I've seen on TikTok. Mm -hmm. um, there's an actress named Shannon Barry who was in a show called The Wilds. Uh, I don't know what else she was in. I just I watched a little bit of that with my mom, and she's in it. And she, I mean, physically, she looks like her. Um, she was great in that show. I feel like her mannerisms and this uh, one? yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. I can um, see that. Her mannerisms and I mean, she's, she was great in the show. So I think I'm on board with it if everybody else mm -hmm. is, but I'm, I'm definitely open to, I trust the creators fully with what they've done already. So if it's not her, I'm not going to be heartbroken also. Cause I haven't seen her in a lot. I just think she was pretty good in the wilds and. Um, she'd be a good, I think, physical adaptation of Abby. Um, even though <laughs> no one I've seen in real life is as jacked as Abby. <laughs> um, they're going to be going through a rigorous workout routine unless uh, they just don't. I mean, but it, it, they have to because, I mean, Abby uses her, her strength a lot in the game. Yeah. Like she can just punch a runner and they're done <laughs> it, it's out KO. I, I can vouch for this um, i thought she was kidding as i was watching her play the other day it was a scene to where they get back somewhere and she and she was like dad i'm telling you like when she doesn't have the jacket on she's jacked and she's wearing a tank top i was like awesome. oh my goodness look at that gun show going on over there and what am I, all i can say is that the annoying fan base that exists right now <laughs> about, oh, this and that and whatever, they're going to be five times more annoying for this next season because of the enormous debate around basically Team Ellie or Team Abby. Um, the people who really want to pick a team and like are really stubborn about are just, you're missing, you're missing the whole point of the story um, is about perceptivity, like, whatever I don't know to, whatever someone does in this universe affects another person's mm -hmm. life somehow um now do, are people not, like this in the game like are what? people team abby and team ellie in the game too yeah that's what i'm talking about because oh, of the game okay, like okay. you're playing back and forth as ellie then you do abby yeah. ellie abby gotcha because of something but they're parallels of each whatever i can't say too much i cannot say too much <laughs> about we didn't it. want to go all the spoilers but it's going to be the controversy is going to be enormous because everybody's going to want to like pick a team or like vouch for ellie until they die not like not wanting to see abby's side um 
Like, even I didn't like playing as Abby as at first. I'm like, I just want to get back to LA, but I'm starting to like it more because they're humanizing her, which is what this show is all about. They're humanizing everybody's decisions. Like, nobody's, nobody, there is no perfect decision to be made in the apocalypse world. There's no right answer. Um, and I think that's a, that's a big thing, yeah. is that there is no right answer. Because even with the end of this episode, which is, as you were saying, basically the end of the first game. It's exactly the end of the first game. You know game. what I mean? It's, oh, well, I can't believe that he would do this and this and the other. But at the end of the day, there is no right answer because you don't know if she, let's just say Ellie was the cure for all this, what the people with the cure were going to do with it. Mm -hmm. Unless you are that person, unless you are the actual physical doctor that's going to do this, which is impossible, especially if it's a loved one. I'd be like, well, you know, I guess we're all fucked because I'm not going to kill my daughter <laughs> to save the rest of society, you know, and I know there's books and movies made about that, but, you know, at the end of the day, who are we to sit here and judge people that would never, will hopefully never be like we, that we would never be in their shoes, yeah. plain and simple. So, I mean, it's easy to judge from the outside, like, ah, oh, well, well, that's an easy choice to make. You you kill this one person, everybody else survives. Yeah, I'll That doesn't just, guarantee survival for everybody else. Like the, me and my friend Juan were talking about this because he also played both games. He's a huge mm. fan. Um, Big shout out to Juan, by the way. <laughs> Thank you for staying over and um, messing up my place. <laughs> um, Abby, the, the, both the, like, face actor who played, who did Abby in the game mm -hmm. and the voice actor both have received tons of hate mail, like death threat hate mail because of how much people want to, I guess, just stay on Ellie's side, Ellie's perspective. This, so whoever's, whoever's about to play Abby is gonna, I hope they have a lot of <laughs> like strength because I'm sure, I mean, hopefully it won't be as bad as how people treated the, the actors of this video game. I hope not, but just the behavior of some fans, I'm kind of worried. Um, yeah, you just have to, I mean, but I, I think the show, I'm not also in another, another, another side of it. I guess I'm not too worried thinking about how good the show does at um, humanizing decisions that are made by the characters in the show. Um, like even if some, something somebody does is messed up, like we know, we can understand why they're, they're great at, developing those relationships and dynamics and their backstory. So we, we understand why they have to do the things they do. So I, I'm also trusting them to be able to, in a really cool creative way, like convey to the audience why Abby does the things she does and why Ellie does the things she do and why neither of them right are right or wrong. Um, but yeah, hopefully people just behave. So as you say that, I want to make this public service announcement because it's funny you say that because the game or the movie or I'll backtrack Game of Thrones. A lot of actors got a lot of hate because they did their roles yeah. so well, you know, including right, the guy funny. that played Joffrey. Like the guy never acted again. He was so great at being Joffrey. And even though if you talk to anyone in the cast, they're like, he is the nicest person person on the planet it's so dumb this is so dumb and i can't I'll, believe people do this yeah yeah and i'd love for this to be just a clip like i hope everybody understands that listens to the show watches the show like when you watch movies and tv shows like these people are actors and actresses like just doing their job they are not real life characters unless they're just like a real life piece of shit that's a whole different story like, don't send death threats and hate mail because they do a really good job playing a terrible character in your eyes or a character that you do not understand. Like, I've never understood that. I remember the first Comic-Con we went to, I brought you, and I even pointed because he was over there in the corner by himself, and it was the character, I can't think of his, his real name, but that played Joffrey, and he had, like, no line, <laughs> and you know it's just one of those things so i'm not saying every every actor or actress or, or everybody that you know they get a big ass line at comic-con but it's just one of those things where you can just tell it's like 
man, like this dude just gets shitted on because he did such a great job as an actor playing the evil villain he was supposed to yeah. play. I mean, it's in the show. That they should pat themselves on the back for, but nobody, nobody has that kind of. I mean, not everybody. I guess I'll say not everybody has that kind of strength to where they can just see these horrible comments no. and to we where they can be okay. Night. Like, yeah, we talked about it last night. Much. I was like, if we, uh, I was telling my daughter last night. You know, we were just watching. Well, you know, welcome to Wrexham. Big shout outs to uh, Ryan Reynolds and and Rob and and the whole Wrexham team. We can't wait to see you. You know, where one of the goalies was getting a bunch of shit because he had a you know a rough streak, and I was like, God forbid, I, if I was any sort of famous, whether athlete, movie, whatever, I'd have to turn social media off because yeah. there's always going to be haters out there. And that's a thing. And I mean, what I what I try to remind people, whether if they're a bar owner, restaurant owner, you know, social influencer, no matter what it may be, like the Grand Canyon gets shitty Yelp, like Yelp reviews. And it's the Grand Canyon. You know what I mean? So you can't it's make funny. all people happy. And that's just like my little thing that I try to remind myself and try to remind others like, you're never, ever yeah. going to make everyone happy. But at the same time, though, it's like getting hatred for just playing a character that you're paid to play and On you're a doing show such a good job. The most viewers of like all time. You know, and, and getting... I feel bad for this dude, man. I do. I can't think of his name right now. It's going to come to me after the show, but I don't feel like editing and going through all that right now. But, and again, the rest of the cast was like, he could not have been the nicest person ever, you know, just to get death threats and this, that, and the other. It's like, this isn't real life. Like, you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me out on this. Mm -hmm. Movies, entertainment, TV shows, streaming, video games, this is our escape, okay? This is our escape from reality. We can't sit here and get mad at people for playing characters to a T, it okay. comes from a place of passion, which is great. You love the story. You right. love the actor, or I guess you don't love the actor. I don't know, but you have to channel that in a different way. I don't right. know what to tell you. It's yeah. a personal problem. And even with sports, it's like, put yourself out there. Like, is your fat ass going to go out there and cover a fucking wide receiver? No, you're not. You know what I mean? Are you a GM of a football team or baseball team? No, you're not. Don't get me wrong. I'm an Eagles fan. We're the harshest fans on the planet. Do I have criticisms? Of course, here and there. But at the end of the day, these are real people doing real jobs. And I'm not saying your jobs aren't real. But, you know, let's just relax a little bit and just understand, like, we're all human beings. We all have feelings. So let's just calm down when it comes to entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> good shit. Yeah. That... High five. That wasn't that good, though. I want to do another one. There we go. One more. Okay. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up our first live stream of 2023. I'm so blessed and happy to have my daughter in town. She's done such a great job house sitting and just being here. My wing person, my person. Oh, boy. Okay. I won't get too deep. <laughs> she gets she gets a little embarrassed. Big shout outs to John, though, who gave her a nice little shout out for being a college graduate at our wedding mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. I will never forget your face in that. Thank you.